Welcome to the Dalton Public Library District, our Black History 2021. I'm Ray, and I'm going to tell you about Bath Reeves. Bath Reeves, Deputy U.S. Marshal, born July 1838 in Crawford County, Arkansas, died January 10, 1910 in Muskogee, Oklahoma at 70 years old. Fact, Bass was an African-American law enforcement officer. He was the first black deputy U.S. Marshal west of the Mississippi River. He had over 3,000 arrests and 14 kills. Bass was a God-fearing man and would minister to his captives, imploring them to get right. Legacy, Bass Reeves Memorial Bridge was dedicated in 2011 in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. May 2012, bronze statue of Bass Reeves stands in Pendergraph Park, Fort Smith, Arkansas. In 2013, he was inducted in the Texas Trail of Fame. Did you know the TV series The Lone Ranger was loosely based on Bass Reeves' career as a deputy marshal and that Bass gave out silver coins as a way of ingratiating himself to people wherever he found himself working. Bad News for Outlaws The Remarkable Life of Bass Reeves, Deputy U.S. Marshal Written by Vonda Michelle Nelson Illustrations by R. Gregory Christie Showdown, Indian Territory, 1884. Jim Webb's luck was running muddy when Bass Reeves rode into town. Webb had stayed one jump ahead of the lawmen for two years. He wasn't about to be caught now. Packing both rifle and revolver, the desperado leaped out a window of Bywater's store. He made a break for his horse, but Reeves cut him off. Bass hollered from the saddle of his stallion warning Webb to give up. The outlaw bolted. Bass shook his head. He hated bloodshed, but Webb might need killing. As a deputy U.S. Marshal, it was Bass's job to bring Webb in, alive or dead. Bass had put Webb behind bars before, but the outlaw was back, on the run. That would end today. Webb couldn't outrun a horse, and knew he'd hang for sure this time. In a last-ditch effort to escape, Webb stopped in his tracks, turned, and let loose with his rifle. Webb's first shot grazed Bass's saddle horn. His second shot cut a button from the lawman's coat. Webb's third tore the reins right out of Bass's hand. Bass ducked his head, dove off his horse, and rolled to his feet just as a fourth bullet clipped his hat brim. That was Jim Webb's last shot ever. Marshal Reeves fired two rounds from his Winchester rifle and the outlaw was done for. As he lay dying, Webb told Bass, you are a brave, brave man. I have killed 11 men and I expected to make you the 12th. Webb gave Bass his revolver out of respect. Bass buried Webb's body and turned in the outlaw's boots and gun belt as proof he'd gotten his man. Being a peace officer in Indian territory was rough and dangerous. The area swarmed with horse thieves, train robbers, cattle rustlers, and gunslingers. Bandits and swindlers and murderers thrived. Travelers sometimes disappeared, never to be heard from again. A lawman's career would, could be short and end bloody. So Bass Reeves had a big job, and it suited him right down to the ground. Everything about him was big. Bass stood a head taller than most men of his time. 
He had broad shoulders and huge hands. Bass was so strong, he single-handedly pulled a steer out of mud up to his neck, while a bunch of slack-jawed cowpokes stood speechless. Bass sported a large, bushy mustache and wore a wide-brimmed black hat. He rode tall, powerful horses, but the biggest thing about Bass Reeves was his character. He had a dedication to duty few men could match. He didn't have a speck of fear in him, and he was as honest as the day is long. Bass brought in wagon loads of criminals, as many as 17 prisoners at a time. Being a church-going man, Bass reckoned he could do more than put men, bad men behind bars. In the evenings after supper, he talked to the outlaws about the Bible and about doing right. Getting through to them was like trying to find hair on a frog, but Bass kept trying. Now and then, captured outlaws tried to get the better of the marshal, but Bass was tough and unflappable. One day, while he napped, a skunk moseyed into camp and stopped next to Bass. Captives chained to the tumbleweed wagon threw stones at the skunk hoping it would spray its stink on the lawman. But when Bass awakened, he didn't flinch. He reached out and gently petted the skunk. Bass's devotion to duty was legendary. His sense of justice was never more tested than by his own son, Benjamin. One awful day, Benjamin killed his own wife after she'd been untrue. Bass was so well-liked that no one wanted to arrest his son. For two days, the warrant lay on his desk of the marshal in Muskogee. When Bass returned to the jail with prisoners, he got the sad news. It was painful, but he did what only Bass Reeves would do. He arrested his own son and turned him over to the court. Although he was sentenced to life, Bass's son was a model prisoner and was pardoned after serving just 10 years. One fall day, Bass Reeves left work feeling ill. Two months later, on January 12, 1910, he died a kidney ailment called Bright's disease. Hundreds of people, blacks, whites, and Indians, attended his burial. A fellow lawman, Bud Ledbetter, called Bass one of the bravest men this country has ever known. And one white homesteader said Bass was the most feared deputy U.S. Marshal that was ever heard of. Over the years, the name of Bass Reeves faded, like one of those heroes they call unsung. But this story has folks talking again, talking about the big man who helped bring peace to a big country. Deputy U.S. Marshal Bass Reeves, a true champion of the American West.